Almighty God. Mm. We've been there 10,000 years, Lord. We're going to only be getting started, God. God of all grace, God of all grace and mercy. God of grace, on this morning we call on you to come and meet us, God. For it was grace that saved a soul like me. It was grace that rescued me. Lord, we come to you this morning and pray for the blessing of your word upon your congregation. And the saints come before the house of the Lord and say amen. 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 What a blessing to be here with you this morning as we come to learn about God's grace, God's love towards us as God's children. I've been thinking about how faithful God has been as I look at Peter's life. And only because I understand Peter because I'm just like Peter. And as many of you here can attest, uh, so are you. And I was thinking of how faithful God has been with grace in my life. I don't know if you've been able to catch on Netflix the get down. I don't know if any of you probably haven't, right? Some of y'all have seen the get down. When you have to watch the get down on Netflix. And it's, a, it's, it's about a group of Puerto Rican and, and, and African American youth in the Bronx who, who gave birth to what we call hip hop today. But I was thinking about that this week as I am done with seminary and I am so much basking in the glory of Netflix. <laughs> and I'm so much just, it's so nice just to kick back on my recliner and, and you know, my dog be looking at me like, hey, it's time to go out. I'm like, chill, this is a good part. <laughs> and I've been watching the get down and, it, and, it, and it's so important for me personally because it's my generation. Because 1977, is a long, long time ago. And I was only 14 years old at the time. I don't want anyone doing any math in their head. Why don't you try to calculate? Don't go back now and put your cell phones away and don't start to calculate because I'm still young. I'm like wine, baby. I just get better. <laughs> but I was thinking about how God has been so faithful and merciful in my life and in your life. And I was thinking about back in those days when, when I came to know the Lord and, and how God has, has just been able to preserve me. And I can truly tell you that this morning I could only stand here because of the grace of God. Amen. This morning, all of us can only come in here because of the journeys that we've been through as LGBTQ people trying to live for God. Oh, how hard it has been to get to where we're at today. It hasn't been easy when they shut us out from the house of the Lord. It hasn't, hasn't been easy when they removed us right. from ministry. It wasn't easy when they hurt us and they broke us because we loved Jesus and they told us we had to leave and they put us out because of who we were. It wasn't easy, but here we are in a new millennium, in a new generation, in the house of the living God on a Sunday morning. Not hungover, not with a headache, but in the house of the living God on a Sunday morning. Sisters and brothers, that is grace that has brought us here. That is grace. And when I think of God's faithfulness in my own life, I recognize God's faithfulness in your life. And it's Peter that I see this morning. It is Peter's testimony and Peter's story and Peter's experience that becomes real in my life this morning. The last time I shared with you on Peter, and we were looking at him on a boat, and he had a powerful experience with Jesus on that boat. And he met the Lord, and he fell on his knees before God, and God told him, I will make you a fisher of persons. I will make you a fisher of humans. And so now today, once again, this morning, we're watching Peter and we're watching Jesus. And Jesus went into the district of Caesarea Philippi. And if you look at that in the biblical maps, what happens is that Jesus 
is burned out. He's tired. He's been going from town to town. So he's leaving his region in Lake Galilee. He's in the Sea of Galilee. He's leaving his region. And he went up, actually, into what we would call today pagan territory. He was moving away from, from the Jewish settlement areas and was just getting away. And they're recuperating. And they're, and they're rebuilding themselves. And Jesus is, is checking in. And he tells his disciples, whom do the people say that I am? Oh, Lord, some, some say you're Elijah, because that was a belief in their day, that Elijah was going to come back. Some say you're Elijah. Others say you're Jeremiah or, or one of the prophets. But who do you say that I am? And that's when Simon Peter once again gets before the Lord and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus looks to Peter and says, blessed are you, Simon, son of Barjona, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father, my parent, who is in heaven, has revealed this to you. And I tell you that I'm going to change your name. I tell you that your name is Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell the gates of addiction, Come on. the gates of hatred, Come on. the gates of anger, the gates of evil and darkness, they will not prevail, will not destroy my church. My church Amen. will survive. Yeah. My church will yeah. live. Yeah. And it's going to be built on you. Yeah. Wow. What an awesome responsibility. What an awesome ministry to be given. I'm freaking out just having to stand up here on Sundays every now and then, let alone to be told that something called the church is going to be built on me. What must have gone through Peter's mind that day? What an amazement must have gone that Christ would take his entire purpose of even wrapping Christ self in human flesh and would put it on a man called Peter. Who is this Peter? who is so unqualified? Who is this Peter whose resume doesn't match? Because this Peter is a fisherman. Jesus is not giving this responsibility to a graduate from the Socrates School of Philosophy in Athens. Jesus didn't go and give this responsibility to one of the great scholarly scribes or Sadducees or Pharisees who were the smartest of the bunch. Jesus went and gave this responsibility to a fisherman who, all oh, he can clean a net for you, but he doesn't know how to read. He doesn't know how to write. He's not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. He's not exactly the straight A student, but he's a fisherman, and it's to him that Christ gives this responsibility. It's to him that Christ gives this calling and this mission. And I'm wondering, what, what, what did that do to him? How did it affect him? Blessed are you. Flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. It was in your education. It was in your scholarly endeavors that revealed this to you. But it's my Father who is in heaven who has made known to you who I am. Flesh and blood does not reveal this. You know, in seminary, I was so amazed with how brilliant people were with things like Hebrew and Greek and Latin, and they had these, these, these faculty members who are just incredibly intelligent with multiple PhDs. And I would always sit there and think that how someone as simple as a custodial worker mopping the floor all night can know Jesus a lot more than these multi-layered PhD individuals who are sitting up teaching philosophy and theology. Come on now. How? Because flesh and blood doesn't reveal this to you, but the parent who is in heaven makes this known to you. Oh, you could spend your whole life reading Greek and, and, and philosophy. I, I, I had a very, very good friend of mine who was in seminary, extremely brilliant, new Hebrew, new Greek, the, the original, the old one. Knew it really well, and, and, and he was a professed atheist. And I would, like, figure that one out, right? Like, what are you doing here, dude? I mean, if I was an atheist, I'd be, like, 
like a high powered attorney or something. <laughs> you know, I'll be making, I'll be, I'll be rich. I'll be getting a degree that's gonna make me some money, right? <laughs> Go work in Manhattan in a high power. I wouldn't be trying to build a church in Orlando if I was an atheist. Figure that one out. But it's not flesh and blood that makes Christ known to you, but it is God who sits in heaven. And this is the Peter that we're seeing this morning. And what we see in the beginning of our scripture reading this morning is a Peter that is young and energetic and was a fisherman. And what we're reading in the letter of Peter in the second part of the scripture was an older man, was the bishop of Rome, was the rock who had lived his whole life and had learned the experiences of, 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 of life. And what we see is this man who was about to go and face death. And so let's quickly look at this paradoxical view of Jesus working in the life of a human called Peter. And imagine what Peter was like in living this. What would happen to you if Jesus came up to you and told you, you're a rock? Oh, am I? You are a rock, and upon this rock will I build my church. So Peter walked around, probably a little puffy, probably a little proud, and walked around and told the other disciples, I'm a rock and you're a pebble. <laughs> probably walked around confident. And this man was incredible, right? Because when, 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 when they were all hanging out in a boat one day, and the, in the middle of the night, they see something coming towards them and they think it's a ghost and, they, and they're aghast, the scripture says. And they say, it's the Lord. And then Peter looks and he sees Jesus walking on water. And what does Jesus do? He walks towards him and Peter wants to do what? We all know the story. Peter wants to walk on water. And Peter looks and says, Lord, call me out to you. Call me, me, it is I, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Call me, call me. And, 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 and Jesus calls Peter, and Peter, Peter steps out the boat, and he starts to, and he starts to walk, and, and you've seen this, and you know the story, right? This isn't new to you. And, and all of a sudden, he, he, he grabs a hold, and he, and he looks, and he, and he realizes, I've defied all the natural laws. I've defied, and he begins to doubt, and he, and he, and he sinks, and he, and he falls in the water. And Jesus has to reach out and say, oh, oh, you of little faith. And he has to pick him up and he has to restore him. And, and sisters and brothers, he be, Peter becomes the example to us in the church of, of, oh, my God, Peter, you of little faith. But I twist that story around. I'm looking at the other side of the coin and saying, hey, y'all, he stood on water. He got off the boat and he stood on water. And I want to let you know that that in itself is a big enough miracle. The fact that he's, and maybe it was for a split second, but I want to see you go out and try to stand <laughs> on land. And Jesus reached out and, and, and picked him up and, and stood him up. Peter stood on water, maybe not fully walked on water, but Peter had the great attempt and he stood on water. G Peter becomes the advisor to Jesus as Jesus later on in the scriptures and the gospels goes and tells his disciples, I must go to Jerusalem and die. Peter the rock stands up, not knowing anything, not having any idea, sits his foot in his mouth and goes up to Jesus and says, oh Lord, no, you cannot go and die. And Jesus looks straight sternly at Peter's eyes and says, get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter's like, what? I thought I was your boy, I'm your rock. And now you're calling me Satan. He says, get thee behind me. Your thoughts are not of God. They are of man. Peter, the great advisor, fails in his advising. And then Peter becomes a great defender of the faith. And as they come to arrest Jesus and take him away, Peter rises up and slices the ear of the guard. And here comes Jesus having to once again protect him, having to pick up his message. Jesus picks up the ear and puts it back and puts the ear miraculously back on the Roman soldier and looks to Peter and, 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 and says, put your sword away. This is not how this is going to happen. Remember, I have to go and I have to do this. Peter never got it. And when he's standing under pressure and when Jesus is arrested and taken away to be crucified 
and, 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 and the disciples scatter. Peter is running. The rock, the bishop of Rome, is running. He's scared. And let me tell you something for those of you who are theologically inquisitive. The only ones who stood with Jesus were the women. They're the only ones who stood with Jesus. Say and it again. Say it one more time. <laughs> the only ones that stood with Jesus were the women. The men all ran. All of the leaders all ran. And Peter stood there in fear. And when a woman came up to Peter and said, wait a minute. I know you from somewhere. I know you from somewhere. You're with him, aren't you? No, oh no, no. The rock is denying Jesus. And he goes and he runs away from the woman. And another man comes up to him and says, wait a minute. No, you are with him. And again, the second time, he denies it and says, no, I don't know him. And then he runs away again, and the third time another person says, yeah, you do know him, because I remember you. You were standing right next to him. And he goes, I swear I don't know this man. And he denies Jesus, and he runs, and he hides, and the rooster crows, and he remembered that Jesus said, before the rooster crow, you would deny me three times. And he sat there in his failure. And he wept and he cried. And we looked at that briefly the last time I was sharing with you. But God was merciful and did not remove the calling from Peter. Amen. Did not remove the calling from Peter. God in God's grace was faithful to the promise God made to Peter that even when he was not faithful, God remained faithful because God cannot deny God's self. God is faithful. Amen. And stood with Peter. And after the resurrection, and Peter's like, oh, I get it. Now I understand. Jesus goes and heals him and tells him, go into the upper room. And when the fire of the Holy Spirit descended upon them, like tongues of fire fell upon them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with other tongues. And they ran out of the room that they were in. And we see a different Peter emerging after Pentecost. And he stands up and preaches boldly, this Jesus whom you crucified, this Jesus whom you killed, God had raised from the dead. And we see the first sermon. And we see him establishing his purpose in the church. And Peter continues throughout life, always being who Peter is. Because even in the midst of the gospel as it's growing and is rapidly increasing, Paul comes along and starts to tell people that you don't have to be Jewish to be saved. And a big controversy breaks out. And the Christians were like, no, they have to become Jews first before they become Christians. And they got to get circumcised, brothers. <laughs> and this fight was breaking out in the church and going back and forth. And God gives Peter a revelation. And God gives Peter a graceful revelation that God is the one saving the Gentiles. And Peter acknowledges that. And then all of a sudden, one day there's a gathering coming together. And Peter is starting to follow Paul. And he's preaching to the Gentiles. And all of a sudden, James and them, the big boys from Jerusalem, were coming. And Peter does what Peter does. He cowardly hides again and backs off. And Paul, the wild one, the crazy one, Paul stood up and rebuked him, he said in public. I corrected Cephas because he was double-minded and because he wasn't being truthful. And he rebuked him in public, the rock, being corrected. And throughout all Peter's life, all we see him failing, but what we see is God being faithful Amen. to who Peter is. Amen. Being faithful to what Peter's calling was all about. And all we see was God and God's mercy reaching out to Peter. And that's the Peter that we read in 1 Peter's. Because what he does at the end, history and tradition tells us, is that he rises up and goes to Rome to die because the Christians were being persecuted. And I don't know about you, but I wonder how many of us would be here tomorrow if they told you that if you love Jesus, we're going to kill you. I wonder what that would do to you. I wonder what that would do if they told you if you're openly gay and love Jesus, are we going to kill you? I wonder what that would do. It's not an easy thing to do. And he goes 
to Rome and becomes what we know as the Bishop of Rome. Becomes who, which is the reason why we call that person the first pope. He becomes the Bishop of Rome and he leads the Church of Rome and he goes and when they're going to persecute and arrest Peter and they're going to kill him for his crimes against the state, they were going to crucify him. He told the Romans, I'm not worthy to die in the same manner of my Lord. And so they crucified him upside down. And today they are cities, they are villages, they are countries that bear his name. Today the Vatican claims to hold his body in a burial site. An entire Vatican is built on his life. And today we have entire villages and towns that acknowledge his name. And today we all know who Peter is, the Bishop of Rome, the first pope, the great leader, the defender of the faith. But he was like you and I. He was a human that failed. And through all his failures, God was merciful in God's mercy and continued to reach out and call him. And so I sit here today recognizing that I'm only here because of the same God of grace that was graceful towards Peter is graceful towards me. Yeah, 1977 was a long, 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 long time ago. But God has been faithful, not because I've been faithful. Right. Because if I had my way, I'd be in Miami right now having a mimosa. <laughs> if I had my way, I wouldn't be in Orlando, right? Because that's the human side of you. But because God is merciful and God is graceful, I'm here. And so I want to wrap it up by telling you this, that, that it, 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 it isn't Peter's story because he's a church leader, because he's a preacher, because because of anything other than he served Christ. Peter's story applies to you today. Peter's story relates to every single one of you. You are here today after all you've been through because of God's grace Amen. and because of God's mercy. Amen. God has called you into this place. And you have tried your best to run from God. You have tried your best to keep away from this Jesus thing because to be queer and saved is not the coolest thing in the world. But no matter how hard you try to run from it, the spirit of the living God continues to reach out to you. Whether it's listening to Kirk Franklin on the radio, or rather it's somewhere that you go and you pick up, the spirit of God continually reaches out to you. And so I want to let you know that the God of grace has brought you here. Thank you. The God of grace has survived you here. And there are some of you sitting here today that have been here for years from the very, very, very first time when this church opened its doors. And you've seen the changes come and go. To you, I thank you for your faithfulness Amen. and the mercy of God. Amen. I thank you for keeping these doors open Amen. because where would I have been at today if it wasn't for this place? Amen. Where would some of us have been probably dead and messed up in the life we lived in if it wasn't for this place? Amen. So thank you. You weren't perfect. Oh, I know there were times you wanted to leave. I know you didn't like every pastor that came this way, and you didn't enjoy every... So you like the one that's here now. I, mean, I, 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 I know you do. I know you do. But, but in God's grace, you kept these doors open. And so the story of Peter is for all of us here today, for you to recognize that God calls you in God's grace. God is the one that sustains you in the same way that God sustained Peter. God is the one that perfects you. So may the God of grace and the God of mercy who has called you into the depths of Christ, may this God reveal to you his love and mercy. Amen. Amen. Amen.